Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this turnkey webinar, SAP Identity and Access Covenant for use cases for implementation. I'm Tom Smith, and I'm a senior manager here at Turnkey Consulting, and I've been working in the access governance, risk management, and cyberspace for around nine years now, helping organizations manage their IT risks and business risks. Um, so we've worked close with SAP products over this time to facilitate um, for a large portion of these companies. So I'm quite excited today to talk a bit about IAG, introduce it, and the deployment options for you. And apologies in advance if I sound a bit husky. Um, I've got a bit of a cold today, but I should be able to get through this with, uh, with full, um, full speech. Um, so I'd like to introduce our guest today as well. I'm very happy to have Gabs Fiatta from SAP. Unfortunately, Valentin, our consultant, couldn't make it today, but we've uh, included his, his information here too. So Gabs, if you'd like to give a quick introduction. Yes, thanks, Tom, and uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, depending on where you are joining us from. It's a, it's a pleasure for me to be here today, and uh, I'm happy to see actually so many people connecting from uh, all around the world, uh, interested to know more about um, SAP Cloud Identity and Access Governance, which many of you will know as um, IAG. Uh, this is a solution that I've been focusing on quite a lot in the past year. And I was actually quite impressed with the number of uh, customers that I've seen uh, starting adopting the solution. Um, and um, last year, I also did a bit of research. I've been collecting thoughts and ideas from different companies, um, as well as our partners. And um, I received um, very valuable inputs, which um, helped me to uh, build a vision of what next generation capabilities we should start exploring for IAG in order to provide our customers with uh, what they need to have, um, sometimes maybe even before uh, they know it, which is what we have done with the access controls many, many, many years ago. And of course, we want to do the same with um, cloud identity and access governance. And I will give you a sneak peek about some of those um, um, things that we're working on in a, in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Gabs. So um, in this session, we're going to be hearing a bit more from Gabs who will outline the different implementation options for SAP IAG and provide a future vision of SAP IAG showing the roadmap over the next few years. And then he'll hand back to us at Turnkey and, and we'll draw on the experience that Gabs has given us um, to go through our four unique use cases while sharing some of our own implementation um, stories, essentially. So we've got four unique use cases there that are fairly broad, but fit with most of our organizations that we work with. And then we'll give a bit of color on what we've seen over the last couple of years implementing these two. So if you do have any questions, feel free to write them in the chat window or the, the Q&A box, and we'll strive to answer as many as we can um, at the end of the session. Um, and then any that we don't get to answer, we'll, we'll get back to you when the recording goes out too. So I'll hand over to Gabs now uh, to go through IAG. That's Gabs. Thanks, Tom. So let's start um, with a quick overview, especially for the ones of you that are not familiar with uh, SAP IAG and, and what is it and why it's needed. So SAP IAG is the identity and access governance solution in the cloud. Now, this is what companies need to manage users access to their heterogeneous and um, hybrid landscape. We have seen you know, more and more companies getting increasingly reliant on their cloud applications for under their business. And with that, we also expect, of course, cloud solutions um, to manage access to their employees and business partners. And that access needs to be controlled, centralized, and automated as much as possible. Whether that is a standard display data access to something that is not sensitive, or whether that is a privileged admin access that is required to solve some um, emergency um, situations. Maybe next slide, uh, Tom. Thank you. So where does um, IG fits in the last case? Um, I will present two main cases, and I know that my colleagues from uh, Turnkey and Tom specifically will uh, expand on those later on, sharing his um, experience. Um, but the first one is a scenario which has been adopted by some of our customers, which already have a well-established access control system in place. And of course, they do not want to throw away all that good work that was done to set it up in the way that it is now. Um, and we have about 
3,000 of those customers. So of course, we have to give those customers an opportunity to extend what they do on-premise to their cloud applications, but without reinventing the wheel. So without um, changing that current processes. And for that, we have the SAP Cloud Identity and Access Governance Bridge. You will see the Cloud IAG Bridge in the slide, which will um, take the processes that are currently implemented on-premise and ensure that customers can apply those for um, cloud solutions so that the impact from a change management perspective is minimal. The second option, which is on the next page, is uh, next one. it's um, more entitled to customers that are starting their journey with SAP now, or simply they want to switch their current access governance solution with an SAP solution. So um, for those customers, I think they would be happy to know that IAG can actually provision accesses and manage accesses to both cloud solutions as well as on-premise solutions. So if you run your ECC on-premise or your BI system on-premise uh, or a third-party system on-premise, you could still use IAG to manage those users. Uh, next one, thank you. Um, however, I've been um, receiving the same comment from many companies telling me, okay, so IAG is, is access control in the cloud. And even though the easy answer seems to be yes, it, it's actually not. You know, IAG access control are two different solutions. Of course, they are planned to tackle the same scenarios and to tackle the same challenges for our customers. But of course, access control was created about 20 years ago and IAG, it's a newer generation technology. And with that, of course, it comes with some smarter functionalities. There are a number of those, which we don't have the time to look into the details today, but I will mention a couple of them. So the first one, which I think many of you will find interesting is what we call analytical decision support. So we are actually able to um, ask identity and access governance to suggest us remediation actions. And we can do that with um, in two ways. One is a very simple refinement with a simple suggestion. And then we also have an advanced refinement where you get more intelligent um, suggested by the solution. Today, we will show you the simple uh, um, refinement where, as you can see here, the solution is basically suggesting you what access you could remove by the user because the access is creating a risk and at the same time is um, not being used by the user. So you will not impact the day-to-day -day job of the person if you go and remove an access, which from an audit perspective, a compliance perspective, can actually seen, is actually seen as a risky and critical. So that's one of the things that um, we do, as well as the next one that I would like to mention today. And again, if you need uh, more examples, feel free to reach out to your SAP account executive that can organize a demo for you to see all the new functionalities that are part of IAG. But this one is also an interesting one. So this is a functionality where using analytics, we can actually mine the current role design of a company. We have an example here where you see on the left side, it's a very uh, complex and segregated security and roles design. And with that, we can actually use analytics and use IAG to suggest us how we could combine roles together to make business roles that then um, help us to manage our role design better in the future. So reducing complexity, but at the same time, providing only the access that users need without increasing segregation of these conflicts or any risks. Okay, then um, to close, and then I'll uh, hand it over to uh, Tom, what are we working on? So what is our vision for the future? And many of those activities are already started there. We're already working with our developers to um, implement them. Um, we're working on enhanced provisioning. So we're working on integrating our IAG solution with our SAP Cloud Identity Services, which is our um, new cloud um, platform to manage identities in hybrid 
um, landscapes. And with that, we are also, actually we released already the same connection capability. So if, if you are an IAG customer now, you're actually able to connect to known SAP solutions leveraging the scheme interface. We're also working on enhanced compliance. So many of our customers told us that it would be helpful to mitigate segregation to these conflicts with controls that are existing and always updated as part of the risk and control matrix. And this is what we will be doing. And we are currently in progress of developing that together with SAP Financial Compliance Management, which is our new cloud solution to manage compliance and controls. Enhanced integration, we are actually already um, releasing a ready to use connector to a number of third party solutions through our Solex, one of our Solex partners. So you can buy a connector that directly connects your IAG environment to a third party solution where you can manage your users. And we're working with our latest um, business process intelligent, intelligence platform, which is Signarium. Most of you will know that we acquired Signavio a number of months ago. We're already working with Signavio in order to integrate IAG with them so that we can do some business process mining. And with this, with this business process mining, we can actually enrich our understanding of the business and with that create better roles and analyze better what um, users need to do in the system. And last but not least, because I think it's the most exciting thing that we're working on, we're working on enhancing the analytics capabilities of our solution. So we want to integrate with CM solutions, for example, SAP enterprise threat detections and other, so that we can analyze logs and activities of users to ensure that um, we can better monitor what they're doing to avoid the critical uh, um, risks for the company. And another one, which is very interesting for me is the um, capability that we want to give to our customers to block critical actions before they take place when a specific violation has bypassed, let's say, a, a threshold of risk that we define. That's something that for me would be a kind of next generation access control that companies are looking at, especially companies that are moving into a more dynamic way of managing accesses. We, we, we don't just block users to do things, we can allow user to do certain things, but if the access, looking at the history of the actions of a user shows a potential critical violations, then we can block the user to perform the next step. Okay. And with that, I think I am done. Thank you very much for listening in. I will be joining the Q&A session later on and I will hand it over to Tom now, thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Gabs. And it sounds like some interesting developments as well coming with IAG over the, over the coming months and years. So look out for them. Um, so handing back to us now at Turnkey, we're going to go through um, the four unique use cases and some of the considerations and tips we have with each of those implementations. So our first scenario to discuss here is an organization currently on S4 HANA Cloud or implementing it, but there's no access governance solution in place. And based upon what Gabs has said there, the best course of action there sounds like getting IAG full cloud edition. So that's, you can connect your corporate IAM, HR or contracting systems, or all three to IAG to support the provisioning process to your cloud application that you're going to set up using the risk analysis functionality to, to be able to run SOD analysis um, on your business roles and users. Just a couple of considerations here with this one. So we've mentioned here that they're implementing S4 HANA on cloud. However, it's interesting and you need to understand where your other key applications lie. So if you have, you know, three or four or 10 or 20 ERPs still on premise, you might want to consider either the IAG bridge or the cloud connectors um, to connect IAG to your on-premise solutions to ensure you have that full view of all risks, not just on your cloud applications. And the second consideration here is something we've come across um, quite a lot in our projects. It's bringing the teams together from both a functional and network standpoint. Now that IAG is in the business technology platform in the cloud, the networking team need to have a much greater understanding of what the functional team are trying to achieve with their configuration so that they can enable that. It's gone are the days of, can you open this firewall? It's more so I'm trying to achieve this provisioning to this system um, through here. 
therefore I need you to understand what I'm trying to do and vice versa the functional teams need to take into account what the networking teams are doing so any project that goes ahead just ensure that those teams are talking to each other and all in, included within the planning process and then just a tip here from one of our engagements so if you are using S4 HANA cloud that's managed by SAP itself and um, a rule set is required at the catalog level so that determines what Fury tiles a user is able to access um, in the S4 system and the reason we raise that is because the administrators of S4 HANA cloud if it's hosted by SAP can only administer to that level of granularity they can't do the kind of permission level so it's important that you're able to see the same information that you're able to administer to as well and um, any questions on that feel free to um, raise them up and we can answer them in more detail too so that's our first scenario our second scenario here is an organization with an on-premise landscape and looking to move to the cloud, but you've currently got no access governance solution in place. So based upon that information, um, we're saying here we would use the IAG solution with the connections to your on-premise solutions too. And um, that allows you to govern your on-premise um, landscape while also governing any new applications that you onboard onto the cloud. So a few considerations here and, and functionality based as well. So the first is the complexity requirements of your access management workflows. Now, IAG is still a maturing solution. It has got flexible workflows in place, but not to the same extent that GRC access control on premise does where you can, you know, send it to send a request to anyone based upon SOD level, criticality of the role, even the user group, et cetera. Um, IAG doesn't have that kind of functionality. So if from a SOC standpoint, compliance, or just the way the business works, you still need that um, configurable workflow, then IAG Bridge might be the better solution there. So you can still use that engine to, uh, to determine where um, workflow items go. The second consideration there is how likely a role level access risk remediation project is. Now, if the auditors have raised that, you know, you've got role level risks and they need to be resolved or internal controls have done that, then the level of reporting in IAG differs from that in access control. So IAG is very much because it's a cloud application and for cloud applications, not just S4 HANA, but also Fieldglass and Ariba. It's of the opinion, um, maybe, that your task roles or your single roles are clean. So the only conflicts that will appear typically are when roles are combined in a user's um, within a user's access. Therefore, it doesn't go down to the same level as granularity that access control does in terms of what roles have conflicts and exactly which um, transaction codes and authorization objects are causing those issues. So if you do have to undergo a large role level access remediation project, then again, access control has the reporting would facilitate that a bit better. And then finally, it's just how long will it be before the move to cloud begins? So we've mentioned here that they're looking to move to cloud, but if it's gonna be another you know, five years or so, it might be the case that an on-premise solution um, suits you a bit better at the moment. And then just a tip there, um, in order to connect to your on-premise solutions, a cloud connector is required um, to, to be able to provision to those. So that's effectively a proxy server to connect to the outside world. And again, you'll need to have the functional and network teams working together to ensure that that works appropriately. So on to scenario three, this is an organization with SAP GRC but unsure what to consider as you move towards more cloud services. And this is probably the most frequent um, query we have because a lot of our organizations we work with uh, for the last 15 years, we've been implementing SAP Access Control 4, and now they're making that journey um, into cloud applications. So this is one of the most recommended uh, solutions and the one we come across the most. Now, so the, the option here would be the IAG integration or bridge edition. So it allows you to keep your access control on premise keep those complex and flexible workflows to provision to your on-premise solutions and then um, be able to provision to the cloud applications too using the IAG bridge edition. Um, in that case, you can then run risk analysis on both your cloud applications and on-premise too to have that full view of all the risks in your environment. So from a consideration standpoint here, um, obviously you've got a cost implication there because you have to license both access control and IAG bridge. Um, and then the skill sets point. So as we mentioned in scenario three, where there are different skill sets required for an IAG implementation compared to a GRC one and the maintenance of those, it's ensuring that within your organization or where you get support from, you do have the skill set to maintain both so that they both work effectively and, and manage your risks. Um, 
And then just a tip here as well, um, there is dual rule set maintenance required. So the on-premise rule set for your on-premise solutions will be stored in access control, whereas your um, cloud IAG um, rule set will be stored in IAG, say for instance, for Ariba. So you can run risk analysis from there. If you are performing an access um, request using GRC access control of the engine, it will pull the results from IAG to include in that request in the workflow. So you don't have to go to multiple different systems during the request process. So um, going on to scenario four, your organization has an on-premise landscape and an immediate need to remediate role level access risks across the estate. So here we're saying that the suggested deployment in the short term would be GRC access control. For the point we raised in scenario two, um, in that the reporting available from access control, especially for role level access risks, is more granular than that in um, IAG. So if you have that immediate need to do that, maybe from auditors or whatever other reason, then it's important that you get that level of information so you can, can do the role remediation effectively. So that is why we'd um, recommend access control in that scenario. And as we've seen from the diagrams that Gab showed, it doesn't necessarily mean that once you've finished with access control, you delete it and it's money gone. In all likelihood, you will follow that upgrade path of getting IAG bridge and then ultimately going to IAG cloud edition once you're completely in the cloud. Um, so a couple of considerations there. The first is the scalability of GRC compared to IAG. As we've seen from Gab's roadmap, there's a lot of investment going into IAG. So over the next five years or so, IAG will be the solution that you know has all the functionality that we need. So you've got to consider that if um, you're going to be moving to the cloud fairly soon. And secondly, it's how quickly can GRC be deployed locally? We know that um, we know that IAG can be deployed fairly quickly, as it's a cloud um, offering offered by SAP, so it can get up and running um, in a fairly short space of time. <coughs> Excuse me. Whereas GRC needs to be deployed locally with a uh, database and a, and a box, et cetera. However, uh, Turnkey do offer a rapid deployment solution there, um, which can get you up and running on access control fairly quickly in order to um, resolve these risks too. Um, just a tip there, following that upgrade path from access control to um, IAG Bridge, the, any custom rule sets you do design in SAP GRC access control can be translated into IAG fairly easily. Um, so about a day's work. So it, there's no effort lost if you do spend a lot of time customizing your access control work um, rule set in order to manage SODs. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Um, so that concludes our four scenarios. So what I want to show you now is just a summary of our considerations for IAG that we've seen as we've implemented this solution over the last um, last couple of years. So from an architecture standpoint, as we've seen, there are many options for integrating with your existing and planned landscapes. And it's important to consider not just where your landscape is now, but where it will be in the next two, five, ten years. From an implementation standpoint, although it is, you know, supplied by SAP and it's in the business technology platform, it isn't just a plug and play. There is some customization and functionality required to be enabled. So you do need that strong skill set of functional basis and network teams uh, to have a successful implementation. <clears throat> um, from a support standpoint, because SAP IAG is hosted by SAP, you are more dependent upon the product support team to resolve any issues compared to a traditional on-premise solution where your system integrators or your internal support teams can debug you know, to the heart's content with a carte blanche SAP all access. Um, you are dependent upon raising tickets and getting the support teams to respond to those. From a functionality and scalability standpoint, GRC and IAG have different strengths, as we've mentioned with the reporting in GRC, and then some of the um, advanced um, advanced support that um, IAG offers in terms of role user remediation. Um, it depends on your, your business need, really. But as we've seen from the roadmap, the <clears throat> in all likelihood, GRC, uh, sorry, IAG is getting all of the investment, so it will be the solution to go to, to in the next uh, five or so years. And then finally, uh, from a commercial standpoint, so IAG is another uh, subscription model, which seems beneficial. And if you're using IAG full edition, then you will um, you'll pay on a monitored users basis, whereas a bridge edition will be based upon unique connectors. So that might be a more beneficial way forward than the typical licensing model you're used to.
So before we go into Q and A, we'll just go through. Uh, we're not going to go through this line by line, but the technical prerequisites that required just to show what your organisation might need in place um, before implementing IAG. As you can see in scenario one, we need all of the SAP BTP set up, the business technology platform, with the identity authentication service and identity provisioning service. For the um, IAG Cloud with Cloud Connectors or IAG Bridge, we also need an instance of the Cloud Connector, which is something else that needs to be implemented. And with IAG Bridge and GSA Access Control, we need a working instance of SAP Access Control on premise two. So, IA Bridge seems to cover it all, but it also has the most implementation required too. So uh, on that, we'll um, lead on to any questions you've had. So I'm just going through the Q&A now. So we have a question here. So we are currently implementing uh, cloud C4C SMC, and that comes with IAS, BTP, and Cockpit for all these applications. Can they be managed by IAG? So um, maybe I can take that one, Tom. So uh, so C4C, so if you go online um, on Google, if you write SAP, cloud identity access governance integration scenarios, you will be prompt to a help page of SAP that lists all the cloud systems that IAG can connect to. And C4C should be one of them. SMC, Tom, do you know what SMC is? Box Solution SMC is? I'm not sure, no, sorry on that. No. Okay. So sorry. if that's, <laughs> if that's a, okay, let's put it in this way. If it's a NABAP system, IAG can provision for that. No problem. If it's a known SAP system, a third party system, it will depend whether SMC um, can deal with scheme connection. If he can deal with the scheme language, with the scheme connection, then you should be able to integrate IAG with SMC. Oh, SAP Marketing Cloud, yes. SAP Marketing Cloud, again, if you go online on the help.com, you will find that is one of those solutions that can be handled by IAG. Brilliant, thank you, Gabs. Um, so next one, I think I'll take this one is, if you already have GRC access control on-premise within with process control, would you recommend that we migrate GRC access control to the cloud so that we only use the GRC on-premise for process control? So that's a good question. And I mean, it depends on um, which applications you're monitoring in the cloud too. But we are working with an organization now who have got access control and are implementing the bridge edition and are continuing to use process control to connect to both the cloud, cloud solutions and to the on-premise solutions too. Mm -hmm. So architecturally it can be done, um, but it would have to know a bit more about your, your current landscape as well as to what the best architectural decision would be. So just going through the questions here. For scenario three, so that's the bridge edition, is it necessary to remove all your risk analysis from on-premise to on, on premise at GRC to IAG, correct? Um, so on that question, that is, no, you don't have to move all your risk analysis to IAG. How it works is when you're running um, an access request, it's all your workflows are within, within GRC access control. Um, for anything on-premise, it'll use your access, your on-premise um, rule sets to run the risk analysis. In any cloud applications you're provisioning to, it will run um, risk analysis using IAG, bring back that data all into access control to make decisions on mitigating control assignments or whether or not to reject the request. If you're running ad hoc risk analysis, if you're for your cloud applications, you need to run that from IAG. From your for your on-premise applications, you need to run that from Access Control separately.
So another question here, maybe for you, Gabs, is yeah. what's the preferred scenario as we have both IDM 8 and Access Control 12 in place? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you already have SAP IDM connected to Access Control on-premise, and I assume you'll be managing a number of on-premise systems with that um, setup, if you then have cloud solutions that you want to um, add to the centralized model, then at this stage, my suggestion will be to connect AC through the bridge to identity and access governance and connect to the systems that you have to. I'm not sure what systems you need to connect to in the cloud, but that setup will ensure that you can keep exactly what you're doing now with IDM and access control, but then still provision users to the cloud using the bridge. Okay, thanks, Gabs. So, question here. Um, are there any plans to release new APIs for IAG? Yes, so there is the plan. Uh, we are continuously working on uh, developing uh, new, AP new APIs every single day with our uh, SAP solutions. This is what we do internally at SAP. When it comes to third-party solutions, then we usually do that through Solex partners. So we are specialized partners that build connectors and we work with them to ensure that um, they build connections to the most popular solutions that are um, in the market. Brilliant, thank you. <clears throat> and then one more about the future roadmap, I think here is, is it planned to have full flexibility to define workflows within IAG, as we mentioned the difference between GRC and IAG? Hmm. Yes. Um, it is planned, full flexibility. Um, so if, if, you, if you are a long-term SAP user, you know that uh, SAP sometimes doesn't want to be that flexible. And that's not just because it's a German company and uh, we are too strict uh, on that. It's just because when it comes to controls and security, sometimes you want to ensure that um, certain processes are kind of, um, um supported to run in a certain way that doesn't mean that we don't we don't want to give flexibility to our customers to meet their business requirements of course we want to ensure that they can um so we will enhance the way that workflows can be updated in IAG to be more flexible but they will still have to be developed in a way that ensures full security and controls for the company okay Thanks, Gabs. Um, I think one for me here is, um, can we directly upload our customized on-premise risk rule set into IAG for our existing on-premise S4 box? And the answer to that is, is yes. Um, I think I mentioned in scenario three or four there, there is some effort required to reformat it into the format that IAG uses, but that's about half a day a day's work. And then you'll be able to use your customized rule set in IAG for that reason. Just looking for more questions. So question here, we've had a, a few of these actually. So Gabs, how do we manage cross-system risk analysis between the cloud and on-premise in the IAG bridge scenario? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question. And this is one of the key functionalities that we have with identity and access governance. So um, what you will do, you will, you will take your, so let's say I, I, I'm reading the, question there is one for example related to Arriva and, and S4ANA so let's say let's take that example if you have an S4ANA system on premise and then you have an Arriva system in the cloud in um, IAG you will have a rule set that will be formed on functions coming from different systems so you will be able into that risk into that rule to monitor if users can for example create um, vendors in the S4ANA system and then create a purchase order for those vendors in your Ariba system. You will be able to identify such cross-system SOB conflict by having this rule combined with functions from Ariba and from S4 on-premise. 
same for other cloud and on-premise solutions, of course. Okay, good, thank you. So um, we talked a lot in the access controls piece, um, the integrated into IAG um, in the next couple of years. Is it fair to say that SAP GRC would still be the solution clients looking to leverage um, with process controls and or risk management in the next few years? Sorry, Tom, uh, I think Sorry. I didn't get that. Okay. Um, is it fair to say that SAP GRC would still be the solution um, that clients are looking to leverage for process controls and risk and or risk management in the next couple of years? with IAG being the kind of access governance for the cloud. Okay, so, um, so yes, so it, for access governance, we already have a solution, which is identity access governance, which is um, focused on our cloud and it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a SaaS solution, it's a cloud solution. For process controls and risk management, we are also releasing now, I wouldn't call it cloud version, like IAG is not, a cloud version of AC, but we are building solutions for the cloud. Actually, we already built SAP Financial Compliance Management, which is the solution in the cloud to manage controls and compliance, um, which is what many customers have done with process controls on premise for, for many years. So, SAP Financial Compliance Management is that solution um, that can um, achieve pretty much the same in the cloud. With risk management, we didn't release it yet, but yes, we are working on a cloud risk management solution, which we're gonna be released soon, which will be um, supporting customers that want to have a cloud solution for risk management, and um, they will be able to run it directly on the cloud, yes. Okay, excellent, thank you. So I think we've got time for one more question, um, which I can answer here. So, <clears throat> Going to granularity a bit, do we have the same sort of initiated tables capabilities for IAG for raising requests and do not um, have a GRC fresh setup? So I think what that question is saying is it's raising the point around the granularity of the work, workflows and how they work. So in IAG, we have three set stages that we can use. We can move these around as, as we wish for manager and security and, and administrator, whereas in GRC, we have the capability for um, initiator rules and agent rules and everything so we can send workflows really wherever we want so that currently isn't in place in um in iag because there are different solutions but i believe as gap was saying there are some plans to um to integrate implement some more flexibility in the workflows but it might be using a more simple approach than maybe brf plus so anything to add on that gabs no exactly like you said tom so basically it's uh it's, uh, we, we're trying to make things simpler, you know. I know that there are so many um, of you that love the complexity of access control. You know, I am a hands and on person myself and, 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 and I've been working access control for many years. And of course I love that complexity, but there are also so many um, companies that uh, don't like that. And they, and they like to have a simpler way of managing things. So we're trying to actually balance uh, the effort uh, and what we provide to customers with uh, identity and access governance. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Gab. So um, that's the end of our, our time and our questions. So I'd like to thank everyone, uh, especially you, Gabs, for coming on today and talking with us and everyone for your questions and listening today and look forward to hearing from you. We'll be, we'll be sharing this recording online um, and any questions that we haven't been able to answer, we'll, we'll strive to get back to as soon as possible. But thank you very much again for taking your lunchtime out to speak to us and um, hopefully hear from you all soon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.